We now move on to the second technical presentation for the day. And the speaker is none other than Sri Arun Kumar Bhatia. Although he needs no introduction, but just to formally introduce him to the audience, a few lines about him. Sir is a consultant, facilitator, and trainer. From the last 17 years, he is based in UAE with exposure to Middle East, North Africa, Indian subcontinent, and EU region. He gained experience in diverse faculties, including project design, project management, product application, and project sales, while working with international groups like Maikawa Japan, GEA Germany, and Gunter Germany. He is also a board member for Ammonia Association of India, that is AAR, and fellow member and follower of international associations, including ASHRAE, IIAR, and TMI from USA. Sir is going to be talking today on a very interesting topic, that is energy efficiency through improved air distribution using CFD analysis. Welcome, sir. The stage is all set and yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ishray. Thank you, Nuranberg Messe, Ref Cold India, and entire team working in refrigeration and cold chain industry. So today's topic, which I've been given responsibility, related to air movement. So the topic is energy efficiency through improved air distribution using CFD analysis. CFD analysis, I think it is uh, still upcoming subject. It is still uh, a new thing for cold chain industry, especially, uh, especially in our part of the world where we are uh, currently residing. But Europe, it is uh, popular from long time. Now the uh, topics I will talk today is that are divided in, uh, first of all, we talk basic, which is refrigeration. And uh, then we talk about uh, air management, which is related to the topic. Then we come to our core subject, which is CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics. And then we go ahead with a few case studies just to explain whatever we have uh, gone through. And then uh, there'll be a question and answers. So let us start the presentation. So normal vapor compression refrigeration system we have a condenser, we have a compressor, we have a evaporator, and we have expansion valve. And if, if I have to give a choice, so, and if I have to analyze system, so this is the way the energy is consumed, or I must say the stakeholders in energy consumption. So compressors, of course, they will consume most of the energy, and then, Coil are the most important part of any cold chain or food chain application where air coolers or air cooling coils consume lot of energy. So today our focus will be to understand how we can reduce or how we can optimize or how we can help people understanding that there is a possibility, there is a uh, there is a scope for us to save energy. Now this is very much related to air management. So if we are able to manage air properly inside the chamber, definitely we can save a lot of energy. So air, as I remember one of my uh, mentor in uh, Netherlands, he used to tell me air is very stupid. So you just blow air, so it will go wherever it find the pass. So let us see how air behave in a chamber and how we can get to know the energy saving techniques using air management. So the game we are getting into is energy saving. And we have very limited scope where we have airflow, air throw, cooling capacity, air temperature, and who are our opponents. The opponents inside the chamber are packing system, the packing of the product, the size of the product, 
size of the store, material to be stored, and the temperatures. I think the air evaporators or air coolers or uh, AHUs or whatever you say, there is a tremendous scope to get energy savings here. And these energy savings can be achieved by a few simple things. Let us go ahead and understand how we can save this energy. So what air, what air does in a cold store or what air does in a cold chamber? It goes with the speed, which we call velocity. It goes with the volume, we, we say flow. And it goes, it carries a temperature. So basically three properties which are the most important are velocity of air, temperature of air, and flow of air. So these are three important parameters or properties which we have to analyze and this will help us to define how much energy savings can be done. Now what I have been understanding and what I have been felt and what I did from many research and from my mentors and the cold stores we have done, that we can achieve about double digit savings which can go up to 15, 16, 17 percent if we do our air management in optimized manner. So let us go ahead and see and learn. Now this is this is the air volume which industry follow or recommend or uh, you know this is the optimum optimum in the, uh, volumes of air inside any chamber. For example, if we are storing the frozen frozen products inside a chamber, the air circulation volume will be different. So uh, what is air circulation? I think it is mentioned here at the bottom, which most of our industry engineers consultants or young talent contractors, they know about it. And if we are blast freezing the product, then air volume should be higher. And if we are shock chilling the product, shock chilling can be uh, for a meat industry, can be for a pre-cooling of fruits and vegetables. So like that, there are different air volumes we are going to use in different applications and chamber sizes. Now the second important point comes is air throw. So air throw is if we go and understand the name air throw. So logically we understand that it is uh, how much air we can throw. So understanding here is if I am putting evaporators or air cooler at one side of the room, the end of the room should be covered. So what I am trying to say, if we am producing minus 10, minus 5 or minus 20 or minus 30 degree Celsius of air at the exit of evaporator or air cooler, it should be able to reach at the end of the room. So my product which is stored at the end of the room should not face any hunger in terms of temperature management. So the, te the, the product which is stored in front rows can get the same equal treatment in terms of temperature management, which is very important and essential to maintain the quality of the product. Now evaporators, in standard evaporators, we use two type of evaporators. One is blowing downwards, and another is, you know, blowing horizontally. So I will, the case studies which I will take, they are also related to these two kind of evaporators. One is going horizontal flow of air, another is vertical flow of air. And the next important point is the temperature management inside the cold room or in the chambers. So temperature management, what I can understand from this, if I am producing X temperature of air, it should reach to entire room and this must return to the air cooler. If the air is not reaching properly back to air cooler, then also there is a lot of 
efficiency management on the state. So we have to also make sure that whatever air we are generating of X volume and Y uh, degree Celsius, it should come back with a proper flow. So here I have shown you an example, for example, uh, minus 31 degree Celsius air is given to a product and air is coming downwards. Uh, and it should it is returning back at minus 29.7 degree Celsius. So this is just an hypothetical figure. The air return temperature depends upon the refrigerant and so many other factors in the uh, the product temperature even. So air is automatically coming back and it is going above for a suction. The phenomena which we call is a chimney effect, which I think most of our industry colleagues, they know about it. And this is another example of air blown downwards. Now this, here comes our uh, main topic of uh, today, which we call uh, computational fluid dynamics or CFD. As I remember, I came across these terms, um, I think 10 years back, when we used to visit for a lot of training and brainstorming sessions. And then I was amazed to see how uh, companies in Europe were using this method to create efficiencies because the energy costs were starting, started rising there. And the challenge was how a contractor or a manufacturer or an engineer, consultant, or any other stakeholder in food chain or coal chain can help reduce energy consumption in coal stores. So then this computational fluid dynamics came in action, or rather uh, I, I personally came across, across uh, this term. So what, what is CFD? The first question comes to our mind or my mind. So it is, it is nothing but, uh, you know, if you go to developed countries, uh, there is a driving test. So they are done virtually, right? There is a simulation. So it is same way, what we are trying to do here is from some equations for, uh, I mean, if we go ahead and study these equations, this will be entire big sessions and I'm not master for that. Uh, the, like Navier-Stokes uh, uh, equations, turbulence modeling, which depends on Raynaud numbers. And there are some mod other modeling techniques where we go ahead and uh, learn what is, learn and achieve what is CFD. So the first step in uh, computational fluid dynamics or CFD, now onwards I will only use shorter name CFD. We have a data for a cold store or we have a data for a chamber. Now, every chamber we design or every racking system we put or any uh, product we put inside, there is always a CAD drawing we start with. As a contractor or a, as an engineer or as a consultant, we start with a drawing. So CFD is also simple. So you create, the first step is to create a drawing, which can be a CAD dot data or any other form of drawing. Then those, that drawing is divided into certain mesh or matrix or certain area where a lot of points can be used as a reference. Reference. So we call technical terms are there, we call, we divide this area and these small parts are in an area uh, are defined in a boundaries and we can domain this as a tags. For example, if I put a triangle here in the chamber, these are the boxes. So understand in a way that this is a blast freezer or this is a cold room and product stored in X square having different temperature airflow 
product sold at the extreme end of this chamber in a Y block. So this we are just trying to do to understand that in a particular area or a particular space, how much temperature, how much airflow, and how much other parameters can be found. And those parameters can be analyzed to achieve our goal. And this information, these parameters can be fed into a software, which we call CFD solver or CFD simulator. And this, then we get the desired result. And from the desired result, we get our study done. And we go ahead making our design analysis. Now let's let's go ahead. What is next? Now, how CFD can be beneficial for us in a cold chain? There are there are uh, many things which we don't analyze on daily basis. For example, racking arrangement, packaging design, ESP optimization. ESP is a very important factor for evaporators and fans which consume, which help us to understand the power consumption of a fan motor. Or rather, higher the ASP, we have to put stronger motor, which in turns, which means a higher kilowatt. So if higher kilowatt, it means we are consuming more power. Airflow optimization, yes, we have already talked about it. If we have less airflow or less air volumes, we cannot achieve our cooling results. We cannot achieve our product quality. We cannot achieve the desired result which are required for a healthy and a nutritious product. Indeed, the next important point is chamber's geometry. Chamber geometry, yes, it plays important role because if your chamber is a larger chamber, for example, I have seen evaporators the chambers are long, you know, the length of the chamber is like uh, 100 meter long, which for our country, like country like India or Indian subcontinent, so 100 meter long chamber, personally, I have not seen. And uh, the height of the chamber, 30 to 40 meters, which definitely a challenge for us to understand how much we do air optimization inside the chamber. So chamber geometry is very important for air temperature optimization. So the main objective, we may conclude that CFD is a simulation to remove traditional barriers to analyze better design and achieve double digit energy savings. For what, so what is uh, CFD, which means we just trying to do a simulation just before the project to be done or just before the projects to be installed. So it help us for us to design optimization or any anything which can help us to foresee the future of our chamber and help us to optimize the performance. But here we are only talking about air distribution and air management using CFD. So here I have, I have uh, given some thermographic images which I have received from some of the reputed manufacturers from Europe. And I have acknowledged them in uh, last of my slide. I, I, I cannot say the names because that is... Now here if you can see, there are... Uh, the color wise you can see temperature from bottom to top. Darker blue is an extreme range of temperature, minus 27, and the, the red is minus 20. So this, the parameters you can always put in CFD uh, simulation software. The color settings, the parameters you can always put. For example, in this case, the simulation engineer have considered minus 27 for dark blue and minus 20 for extreme red. So this can be changed also. So first slide I missed to mention that evaporators are placed at three sidewise blowing in a chamber. And the second 
we see the effect here. The third, the temperature distribution can be analyzed if evaporator is on the side wall of the chamber. And similarly, velocity streamlines. For example, here we can see how the, uh, the air is blown and seen at the end of the chamber. And uh, below right, you may witness velocity di distribution in meter per second and the chamber uh, temperature profile also. So now uh, let us move to our case study one, where we will understand a chamber of uh, approximately 80 meter length and uh, 40 meter width and 25 meter height. So this was a project where uh, a manufacturer and a consultant and the owner, they wanted, they have already finalized a order with a, a reputed manufacturer in Europe. Okay, now they wanted to make sure the evaporator selection, what they have done, is it okay? Or is there any chances to improve? Or is there any chances that they can optimize airflow management or temperature distribution management? Or we can have enhancement in thermodynamic performance of evaporators. I hope you remember previous slides where we mentioned that we can achieve double digit energy savings if we are having a good and efficient energy saving, energy uh, uh, air distribution in the chamber. Now, the one thing you have observed that this. Chamber is a long chamber. So if it is a small chamber, 10 meter, 5 meter, maybe a stakeholders like uh, owner or consultant may not bother about going ahead with CFD uh, simulation. But this is a very large chamber. And they wanted to make sure that the result should be achieved. Now this is, uh, this is the first uh, thing they have done as a simulator, they try to place evaporator on one side of the room. Here you can witness the air is blown from an evaporator and this is going till the last end of the room. So we can visualize that uh, I think most of the chamber is covered with the air. but Another important point which you can understand is Quanda effect. The Quanda effect is, uh, I don't want to explain that, that every most of our engineers, they are aware, but it says that when whenever some fluid, it, it, is, uh, it is flowing, so it, is, it has a natural tendency to go towards the extreme end, towards the walls. So if you say here, uh, the airflow is going towards the, the wall of the chamber the top, the roof of the chamber. But important thing you must understand on right hand side figure that the middle of the room, there is no air or as a engineer, I, I can analyze that the product stored there will be always staying hungry and the product will not be able to get the temperature which it it want. So which means the product store here may, be not, may not be a good quality, may not be as per the standards required for nutritional value or it may be spoiled product. Now the second, second uh, simulation done in this case was where two evaporators are clearly visible. So you can see in this, in this uh, simulation, which I have received, the air is not able to reach to the end of uh, opposite end of the room. So we have a challenge here that the product which is stored at extreme end of the room, the, the product is not getting enough air, which means product may get spoiled. So what we should do next? We should have uh, high capacity fans, which means uh, high capacity motors, 
or we try to change the speed of the fan. There are various options available, but it is a prerogative of a designer because the designer knows what evaporators and what conditions is uh, actually existing at the site. Or a simulation software can only define the parameters which we put inside the software. Now this is another top view where we have done air distribution study with the X type of evaporators. So here you can see the air is not reaching at the end of chamber. Yes, I think we, we remember from previous slide that uh, the chambers are long. The chambers are close to 80, 85 meters. And there are a lot of resistance in between. There are a product, there is a, a racking system. So the fans are not able to push the air to the end of the chamber. Now, if we go change the fan specifications, still, if you go at the bottom, if we are going to, in, if we are increasing the velocity by changing speed or other uh, um, other measures, then we we can observe when a bottom there is a zones. If you see these uh, lighter color zones, so these zones you can see there is no enough temperature management. When I say temperature management, so we are not able to manage the temperature. Uh, of the product which is lying on the racks. Okay. Uh, for example, if I've stored ice cream at minus 25 and the manufacturer specification is uh, the stored temperature should be minus 22 plus minus 1 degree or minus 24 plus minus 1 degree. So I cannot go below certain recommended temperatures because this if that particular product or ice cream go below certain temperature range, it may lose its properties, which means losing a taste in a layman understanding. And in a food technologist understanding that it loses its structure, which is a healthy and nutritional value. So what, what designer will do? Designer have studied that these evaporators or uh, different simulations with higher airflow, lower airflow, extreme velocity, he is not able to do the justice to the chamber. So then he does another, the same test, he has uh, seen the, the velocity streamlines. Here also we can observe the same way the first slide they have shown that there is a a lot of places where temperature is not maintained. So now in this case study, we can understand that uh, the uh, we can create a correlation of air throw and air volume and air temperature. So what designer have done in this case, designers have concluded that it is always better to put two evaporators at two different extremes. For example, two evaporators on this side, left hand side of the chamber, and two evaporators on the right hand side of the chamber. So that was the best solution we could achieve on this particular case, as that was commercially viable, and it was also a lot of energy savings in that case. And um, the positioning of evaporators were decided agreeable why by evaporator manufacturer, the consultant and the owner. So see, by simple study, we are able to find out what are the best suitable evaporator. Now the question comes to my mind, why we don't do this in normal uh, chambers? I think because uh, the smaller chambers, there is no challenge sending air or air volume maintenance to larger chambers, this is, this is a real challenge. So in this, uh, the case study one, we can conclude that uh, uh, the, the placement of evaporators can be studied by using the CFD analysis. And by this, we should 
we we are able to achieve our desired results which is ultimately it's the game of power saving and we have to be responsible now let's move ahead with the uh, another case study this is a case study which was done by an uh, university i have already acknowledged their names so in this case uh, we are going to study the simulation of air and temperature inside a pre cooling chamber and here we are not only going to study the air management or temperature management but the most important thing is how a product is able to get enough air to stay uh, in a desired thermodynamic you know health thermodynamically healthy so in this uh, study we had uh, uh, there was a simulation done for a palm granite uh, palm granite uh, cooling the palm granite pre cooling requires uh, a temperature a, a air flow and an evaporator placement so this study we had certain type of boxes in this boxes uh, we have we have done careful study previously that the air should flow inside these boxes cooling palm granites and uh, and these uh, boxes can be modified these boxes can be uh, redesigned to help a temperature management and air flow uh, management now now here you can see these boxes are stacked in different uh, ways there are uh, bottom left front left front right bottom right so the air is forced through these boxes so there are there are two arrangements which we have done there are seven layers of 10 boxes there are 10 and uh, ct2 boxes eight layers of 12 boxes and each carton is packed with 12 palm granites the weight was approximately 4 kg and then we went ahead and what we found what we found was very interesting that ct2 type of packaging okay has a lowest pressure loss see pressure is very important for air management in this case the design of the box a particular design of the box which we which we also see in next slide there is a there was a higher pressure resistance so if i am pushing air through the boxes and it is taking a lot of effort and the air is taking a lot of power which means i have to put a higher capacity fan so x evaporator can comes with a 5 kilowatt fan or it can come with a 7 kilowatt fan so you see my design of a box or my design of a racking arrangement can increase or decrease maybe 20% of a uh, power consumption for a fan so this was the only objective to study this type of uh, packaging design so if you go ahead in the graph you can you can see the ct2 has highest loss which means they are uh, they have to use very high capacity fan or they have to use a higher capacity fan to achieve same result which in case of ct2 uh, uh, ct2 without lining now this was the cfd which was done so if you can observe there was a velocity with if you see in blue case uh, we have put a zero for same way like we put in plc uh, sensor uh, uh, setting parameter zero to uh, zero is the lower limit and whatever highest limit we can set so 0 to 5 meter per second velocity which was the target for coarse air cooling the air is pushed from 
left hand side and it is going to exit from the other end resulting pre cooling of palm granite and helping palm granite uh, to stay longer life in a uh, cold storage or a cold chain if uh, this was done at a post harvesting site which means closer to the farm and this is very necessary for uh, food chain cold chain or food security now in the second second uh, box a box v b we can see there are smooth temperature uh, the force uh, air is going through it but you can see the the cooling on the extreme end of the box is not visible or i can at least see the lines of a temperature or line of air the stream which is not a very streamline and this is not well channeled which means the power consumption we are using to generate colder air is not the cold is not transferred to the food and it must be transferred to the food because we are consuming we are consuming power to generate air at a temperature and by that if the air is not reaching properly which means we are consuming higher power and we are not getting results and what is our objective our objective is to have best air flow management temperature management to ensure that our food or our fruit pre cooling is done in a most efficient manner now uh, modification of vent holes uh, these were the holes which were inside the carton box if we go back to this slide if you see there are different arrangement of holes here and here the carton b is a different arrangement of holes so now we have done some modification in both uh, uh, container 1 which is a con uh, container 2 which is uh, ct2 and doing this uh, whole or a temperature management we have redesigned now container 1 now you see there was a a model and there is a b which is which we have done certain modification now the round is change into the uh, vertical ones just to understand and just to make sure that air management can be maintained properly and resulting that we can save power and see we found interesting results now if you see here redesigning the ct1 box the redesigning the box help us doing wonders and and here i was even surprised because i have not personally i have not uh, i was not aware that even ct even simulation done with the packaging can help us to save that much power yes and now you can see in a uh, picture a or a simulation a some products are not able to get enough air that was due to the boxes which were not properly designed in a redesigned box you can see there is enough cooling on each each product which was the product it was palm granite and we are able to achieve enough air cooling and this two results what i am trying to tell is these two results are not concluded very easily there are the simulator the engineer had to do lot of simulations to reach to this level and to conclude what is the most efficient manner that we can we are throwing we are pushing air at 7 degree celsius and that air should be transferred to a product which is palm grain in it this case for example there are products like grapes in india so the grapes pre cooling is also very challenging there are many people they have done research they have done lot of things in india but again cfd can be one of important uh, technique or it can be one of important uh, engineering method which can help us to analyze existing chambers and also it will help us to uh, for our future products because pre cooling the stakes are very high the product cost is very high 
and if we can save energy using uh, same amount of energy or using uh, less amount of energy and getting better results the point here is to get better results now what was the conclusion from this case study uh, the conclusion drawn was the pressure losses and airflow patterns and temperature distribution can be a, a, achieved by force cooling of palm granite in an efficient manner if you use CFD in a proper way. Now the palm granite was a packed with a lining. A lining, I must say the lining, it is, a, it is kind of a polythene wrapping done on a product just to make sure when we are force cooling the product, there is a moisture which can be escaping from the product. Yes, I think most of the refrigeration engineers and uh, designers, they understand this phenomena. Because of temperature difference, the moisture will be escaping the surface of the fruit. So this, to avoid that, the, uh, the farmers were using the lining, which was a polythene lining. So that the way they were using the lining, there were a lot of velocity losses and the temperature and airflow management was not able to use properly. So our external static pressure or a, a pressure on the air was so high that we were consuming more power. So by CFD, emulation, uh, CFD simulations, we have highlighted or we understood that it is essential and it is the most important that we must understand that design of packaging is very important in airflow management even even smaller details like plastic lining packaging crate arrangement is essential and it is a key parameter which can help us to reduce power consumption so don't forget we are using same evaporator we are using uh, same fans but we are now getting higher effect of air, air uh, transfer or a cooling transfer to the product. How? Because we are able to study or simulate the performance through CFD. Now, this case study also highlighted that force cooling of palm granite fruit is essential at post harvesting site. But how we can make how we can make this uh, power efficient how we can make this energy efficient that we can reduce significant load on the fans by changing uh, package design by changing airflow management uh, by modification of lining or modification of packing i think uh, with that i will end and i am at the 41 minute of my presentation i think that was the time allocated to me so I will hand over to the uh, for the question answer because I would like to take uh, more question answers. Yes, over to you for question answers. Which type of facility is CFD most essential for? Uh, I think this is uh, the question which I always ask myself. And there is a thin line. But I personally believe uh, the store, which is like a big chambers, uh, stores which uh, having uh, larger areas, the stores which, uh, for example, the store which we studied uh, in a case study one was in 80 meter long. So air flow, air throw, air volume, temperature management was a challenge. So if I'm the owner, if I'm the consultant, I will definitely go for a simulation uh, CFD simulation for these kind of store. So my answer to this is that store with the larger areas, larger uh, uh, areas in length, width, and height, we must try to go for uh, CFD simulation. This is first part. Second, also, wherever we have a high value product and power consumption is very high, for example, pre-cooling rooms, there are a lot of products and the pre-coolings are blast freezing in, the, in a shorter period of time. And the power consumption there is very high and it is a money-making machines. 
and it is there we consume very high power and i would recommend so high bay cold stores which is high height longer lens and also pre cooling rooms and blast freezer rooms so i hope i am able to answer how difficult is it to set up an efficient cfd infrastructure with lab professionals etc see cfd is very much relevant to our country as i always believe that uh, indian brains are one of the best brains in the world and i'm really proud that uh, i'm an indian and i owe whatever i learned to india so my country is uh, very special and the project what we are doing is also very special and we are always willing to take uh, risk and doing new techniques in our cold chain industry in our uh, countries there is a lot of projects which are happening for example fisheries uh, segment where uh, blast freezing is done we can do uh, some analysis on that we can check how cfd uh, simulation can help us save power because till date we are only believing on certain manufacturers we don't know how the result of a particular evaporator uh, will be uh, transformed or rather it will help us to get a desired result which are promised a pre cooling room for example a state like maharashtra where a lot of uh, uh, grave pre cooling is done there are other states where uh, lot of uh, pre coolings of other fruits and vegetables is done so there we can do some simulations but we have many research uh, fellows in iits and other institutions there are many papers available on internet so uh, answer answering your question there are a lot of scope in our countries to use in existing projects and future projects the second question that i can see on the chat box is uh, can we use thermography as a validation for cfd design i mean i'm trying to understand but whatever uh, my knowledge is see cfd as i always say believe that uh, we have one of the best brains particular in terms uh, of indian context india have got best technical brains so setting up a lab or uh, setting up any simulation mechanism is not at all difficult because there are challenges uh, people say there are challenges about intelligence or there are challenges about intellectual things but that point is already i will not consider in terms of india but yes there is lot of cost involved with it uh, i think we are best uh, software engineers i think we should encourage or we should uh, have some uh, simulation software designers in india and as a industry or as a isre is a very positive organization so isre can take this step and uh, help uh, you know maybe they can help uh, they can take this mission further setting up uh, some software engineers young students but currently there are software there are some simulation softwares they are available but they are highly expensive for example as far as i know they are costing around 40 to 60000 euros which i think this is not justifiable uh, you know we are here trying to improve farmers life we are not here to uh, you know spend so much money our country need uh, improvement with the least investment so my thinking is the cost is very high if you go with the european or american uh, simulation software this is this is as per my knowledge yes there are some software companies which are claiming that they can do uh, some software which is uh, available on cloud and this cloud uh, software and cloud mechanism is another point which is upcoming and it can uh, definitely help us uh, getting you know this thing makes accessible and easily available to everybody and coming back to your question i think uh, it is very easy to set up a infrastructure it is very easy to uh, set up a software but currently these softwares not uh, economically uh, you know for me it is not they are not economically viable 
Thank you, sir, for that wonderful presentation. And I see we have got a very good participation from the audience and there are quite a few questions in the chat box. In the interest of time, I would like to take up a few. Uh, so, sir, the first question that we have for you is, how difficult is it to set up an efficient CFD infrastructure with lab professionals, et cetera? 